Yeah. Well, I'm suing Granby again. Yeah, I know it. Yeah, I'll, I, yeah, I was wondering about that. Uh, we're we're watching weather to see what it's like. Hello. Here. The question is to whether or not you don't want to be spending any of that two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Well. The thing about it is, is that this is private money, so you're gonna have to pay for your own lawyers. Exactly. You know what I mean? You spend private money. You spend any of that private money, more likely you'll go to prison. You don't spend that private money, you probably won't go to prison. You say you don't know anything. You don't spend private money. It's not Granby money. It's private money. Don't spend it. Oh, hello. She didn't want to talk to me, but I did think, you know, go ahead and inform her that since this is, you know, this is private money on the cemetery fund, their little lawyer, their little lawyer, their little lawyer, you know, can't, their little lawyer can't protect them. They're going to have to go ahead and pay 400 bucks an hour for their own private lawyer to spend private funds. You understand what I'm saying? How's it going? I'm going to go ahead and sue Ashley's church here. Essentially, what does this church have to do with it? Hey, you know, I don't even want to know. Well, no, I mean, hey, that's what we have to find out during discovery. You know what I mean? <laughs> let's go ahead and find out. I mean, someone's going to have to go ahead and pay back that $250,000 if it was spent. Now, if none of it's spent, so go ahead. Let's go. You understand what I'm saying? They're good to go. If they don't, <laughs> I didn't tell you, but uh, I put it up on my web page. Kansas City, Kansas City Red Star, Kansas City Red Star. We had to print it up at a. <laughs> This fellow you had to pay forty-two thousand dollars for violating the Sunshine Act. They were playing the same game. Uh, some woman, some woman, she was driving down some street around Kansas City, and they weren't they weren't maintaining the line of sight, so she got run over and killed. So then they went ahead and sued the city. And what happens is that their city clerk is playing the same game that Lana likes to play. You know what I mean? And so they said, hey, we got to pay $42,000. It's on my webpage, Kansas City uh, paper. But they want to pretend, they want to pretend that they have good government. <laughs> this sort of nonsense. February 12th, I asked to host a public meeting. So they held a public meeting on the 18th. And you got the big dog scared everybody. So, I'm going to be a boy. There's Chad for his little packet. He is fed. He is fed real good by T. Rampage. Her. Okay. Who is T. Rampage for anyway?
individuals be kept safe as they work for Grandview, but above all, Father, tonight, may decisions be made that will be pleasing and beneficial to Grandview. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Meeting will come to order. 701. Ashley Ashton. Present. Joyce Mann. Present. Travis Campbell. Will Barrett. Here. Tyra Hawkins. Here. And Travis is absent on all of these duties tonight. Uh, agenda, before we start, I just do want to say, as uh, a representative of the city, I offer my condolences to the family of Tom Cole for his passing. He uh, was a um, councilman here. As a matter of fact, he was a councilman just before I came on. And as a as a group of, uh, of aldermen, he all brought condolences to the family. Uh, approval of the agenda. Move to approve. Second. Then uh, uh, approval and second. Uh, those in favor of the agenda, as is, uh, they vote. Approval of the minutes, February 12th and February 8th, 19, uh, 2019. Was there a meeting? Approve the minutes of February the 12th. And February the 18th, <coughs> as written. Okay. Yeah, for the first I'm time I've heard. Second on approval of the minutes. Uh, wow. All in favor? About this supposedly public meeting on the 18th. All right, we have uh, our first guest, uh, Reggie Bart. Any concerning uh, Barton? <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I have had a problem in my neighborhood for a while now. Uh, in talking with Chief Kelly today, uh, we have documentation back to July, is that correct? Of last year. Um, there is a large dog, brown dog, but I think he's a warmer on him. That would be high. He is chained up behind a house on the corner of Pennsylvania <coughs> and Church. Now, I live on Grove and Newton, which is directly catty corner opposite. This dog started being chained up back there midsummer last year, and he is a chronic night barker. Um, he doesn't just bark, he barks for hours. Um, after 11 o'clock, that begins to affect my sleep schedule. It's right directly outside my window. So I started making complaints about the parking dog. Um, we had three documented written ones, two 911 calls that we're still looking for in the system. Um, a previous uh, conversation with Chief Kelly about the dog. Um, after the two most recent complaints, which were February 12th and February 14th, uh, I understand that something was finally accomplished in the fact that this owner um, did receive a citation and a um, In looking through the statute, um, it kind of became unclear to me as to what the progressive resolution for a public nuisance would be. Um, it's not clear as far as the ordinance goes. Um, it does define that continuous barking is a nuisance. Um, it also, as far as remedies for that, and I know you guys read the statute, but I'll read it for you again. The remedies are any person violating any provision of this chapter, except indicated otherwise, Shall be guilty, uh, shall be deemed guilty of a misdemeanor, and shall be punished by a fine of not less than twenty-five dollars, and not more than five hundred dollars. If a violation continues, each day's violation shall be deemed a separate violation. 
that does not say anything to me as to the first violation should be a warning. The second violation should be a fine. The third violation should be a fine and a court summons. The fourth violation should have the dog if removed. It, we need to have something in the ordinance or as Chief Kelly and I discussed today, a possible policy revision on their part so that there is a cut and dry, black and white process in order to get something done. Bless the cop's heart, they've had a lot of turnover. There's been some discontinuity as far as what's done from one complaint to the next. At this point, as far as I know, after seven complaints, I finally got some kind of resolution. So I see that as a problem. I know there's a lot of barking dogs in town. I've had a lot of people approach me about what do we do, what do we do? And I keep telling them, you need to report, you call the dispatch, they will send the police officer, you have to have documentation. But if the documentation falls through because one officer doesn't know that two days ago they got a warning, they're gonna go in there and make her and give them a warning. So he and I discussed about the continuity that something should be done and can be done as far as putting something down on paper to make this a, a, a problem that can be resolved. Um, in my selfishness, I would like to have seen it done way before now. Um, however, I'm, I'm happy that there is now something being done about it. However, the dog doesn't know he's had a ticket and he's still working. So, you know, in, in the meantime, you know, I have to wait for March's court now, which will probably be mid-month. Mid March 8th. Okay. So that will be the court date. That person will come in and either plead guilty or not guilty. Then I have to wait another month before I get a say with the judge as far as, yes, he's still a nuisance. So I have 60 more days or 45 more days to listen to this month. Whereas, you know, if we can get something down on paper where it's very black and white as far as the resolution, that would be my greatest wish. Um, that as well as the running dogs. That's an ongoing problem as well. Um, on the other side of that, Miss Lana did put down a good part of why I wanted to be here. <laughs> um, our many volunteer group is growing leaps and bounds. Um, we have enough people now that we are looking for work to do. Um, it was voted at our meeting last Sunday to go ahead and cut the city up in four quadrants. Uh, start in my quadrant because that's where we're going to start. And we are going to go down every street in that quadrant. We're going to pick up trash. We're going to clean ditches back to property lines, um, weedy intersections, clean up signs, um, and do that through the summer until we get the whole city done. That's a so that's our goal for the year. In addition to that, um, I also met last court date with Judge White. Um, apparently, I am going to be the recipient of some future community service people. So I will have lots of extra hands. Um, those people will not be doing work in the city without my supervision. So we will be um, working those people as well to try and get our city to do She wants to run a chain gang. With that being said, I'm done. Uh, Reggie, well, let me yes, Let me say one sure. thing nuisance in general, mm -hmm. not just the dogs. I, right. I believe that people move to towns for, for rules and regulations, or they'd be somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And nuisance is always an ongoing problem because sometimes neighborhoods just change, people change. Right. One moves mm -hmm. out and one moves in. Has anybody talked to the owners of this, of this dog? What's their... We did last summer. We. I we attempted to speak with them. In fact, at that point, I was willing to, you know, actually take the dog because 
I can't prove the abuse and neglect yet, but I'm working on that. Um, this dog has basically been put on a chain and left. Just basically somebody gave him a dog or well, the dog went according, according to the fellow that I talked to in the house, the dog belonged to his daughter. His daughter has gone off to school or moved somewhere that she cannot have this dog. And so they are keeping it for her. I don't see anybody out there paying any attention to the dog. A lot of times the, the weather is horrible. He has a bare wood dog house, no insulation to it. Very infrequently do I see water or food pans. No, you, when, you talk, when you talk about a when you talk about a a procedure that you've gone to or looking for some type of a systematic procedure. You're talking about abuse is what you're talking about here. Well I what can't has, prove what that. What has, but what, has suspicion. Uh, what has the police department have what have they done in this situation that just issued a ticket mm -hmm. just, but just recent. Just recent. Fourteen. If it's okay. <coughs> the last time I approached them, I made them aware of the situation, and we could already prove that we had the, the three written reports. Uh, she was issued a summons to come to court. Now, something that I've talked to the chief about, and I've talked to Reggie about, is getting with our attorney, Jared. I think a resolution that might help us is an anti-tether law in town or an ordinance. That means you cannot tether your animal outside for more than 30 minutes at a time. Um, we've also talked about USDA standards. <clears throat> if we can use the wording from the USDA standards, adequate for an animal would mean a dog house, not a trash can, but a house built for an animal where they can actually stand up in and turn around and be able to lay down. So an adequate would mean something for that animal size. Um, and that was something that uh, one of us is going to talk to Jared about and see if we can use those USDA standards for that. So basically what you're saying is, uh, understanding this right, we need to somehow kind of rewrite our, our dog's uh, policy somewhere because it even goes over into the, uh, the dogs running at large. Right. Right. The only thing I'm going to caution about is what if we write, we have to make sure that we can maintain that in our own pound. Yeah. Um, some of the ordinances out there require that people bring their animals in when temperatures drop below 32 degrees. Um, that's not something we can necessarily do in our pound. So whatever we do with Jared, if we get new ordinances, or just rewrite the, the vocabulary on we have to be careful that we are able to follow those guidelines here in our Yeah, because you don't want $20 all at once because of the weather gets cold. But I, I think in discussions, I think the anti tether law would, ordinance would be the best because then we can say, okay, I've come by here, I was here at 1130. Our ordinance says they're going to be 30 minutes. It's 12 o'clock, it's still on there. You can pretty well dictate that, that animal's been on there for quite some time. They have to bring them inside or build a fence to maintain that animal. Or adequate shelter. Right. Got all kinds of questions. <laughs> I am uh, on that anti tether. I, I don't agree with that. I mean, if you want to do the 30 minutes, that that's cool, but it just needs to be enforced. Just enforce the law, enforce that rule that's already there. But to have a, a complete anti Tether, I mean, there's a lot of house dogs. All they want to do is just run around in the grass. Mm -hmm. And so you can get a cable between two trees and the line that goes back and forth. That, that makes that dog happy. Now, to leave it on there forever and ever, that's the whole thing. <coughs> that's, 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 what it, that's what it's going to prevent. I know, but you said anti complete. Well, yeah. I'm sorry, I will <coughs> rephrase that. It's an anti tether. It means they can't be out there extended periods of time. That's cool. That's yeah. fine. That's fine. And then you would have to define what would be an extended well, period. I, I think there's a difference between tethering to a tree and a, and a uh, cable run. Yeah, right. And so, but that, that's probably for another discussion uh, right. when it comes to the ordinance and everything. Uh, but I think the, the, the uh, procedure has already started to try to bring some, some uh, 
into this right. some way. Is it? Do you feel like it's oh, right, absolutely. Is? And then, and you know that was my whole point was just to make a public appearance and appeal to just get a little more clarity for this, just because it's it's difficult to follow through with, especially when you lose you know somebody who's been working on something and but they won't let you take the dogs uh, eventually they are there are statutes on well, I mean, the books right now they won't let you take right, the dog right unless you know unless it's aggressive or, or something the owner won't yeah. let you anybody well at, at, if you put this by uh, this procedure in your ordinance if they reach that point where there's been three or four summons or, or tickets and there, there still is no resolution. Missouri law, federal law, both give uh, a city ordinance uh, enforcement to where they can remove the dog from the property for continuing to create a nuisance. So there is, there is laws on the books in this state for removal of an animal. Well, uh, I've gone ahead and listened to her tell the wool. The thing about it is, is that regards what you pass according to uh, article 1 section 39 a board or an agency can't impose fines or impeasant you have to have full due process of law more than likely that person there well i'd probably tell them just okay if you get found guilty at the municipal level and i'm doing my best to shut down the Grammy municipal court but you go ahead then you're going to go ahead and you're going to go to you're going to go to uh what the state court, and I would just love to—I would just love to uh, see somebody going ahead. And he had his puppy dog out on a tether for more than 31 minutes here. I can just see a jury going ahead and agreeing with that. And then, you know, then what happens is that then you can go ahead and take it to the court of appeals. Essentially, you, you're talking about a lot, bunch of lawyers. Of yeah. well, you're talking about. If you're talking about making a law, you don't want to go into the legalities of the system. Oh, I'm, we're not. We're, if we talk about making the, the new ordinance, something like that, we'll study out the ordinance at the time that it's written out. Okay. Uh, the legal process. By, right. by the way, by the way, I'll. Uh, you know, I don't want your. I don't want your volunteer group trespassing on my property. I wouldn't think of setting my feet on your All property. Right, thank That's you. good. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate it, and um, if there is any circumstances within the city, <coughs> should a trash can get overturned or something, you guys need extra pairs of hands to call us. Okay. We are we are willing to help clean the city. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you All right. I have a, I guess a statement and question. Go ahead. Um, that I think the chief can correct me if I'm wrong. You you know you mentioned the issue of you know, say turnover in the police department. Mm -hmm. And one officer responds and then a certain amount of time goes by and then the next officer that comes along doesn't have knowledge of the previous things that happened. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Chief, this new CAD system, and I'm not using the right terminology, the, the way that reports are done, this new system should help prevent that. Correct? Yes, because they can look up in that system right there on the spot. Hey, we can They'll say the previous activities. Uh, in in previous instances, I didn't know usually, you know. yeah, we we generally knew it was being on. implemented, but I know it had not been prior, and there have been a couple of reports that have gotten kind of. Um, previously, we generally had to rely on the officer calling dispatch saying, "Hey, is there any of the previous yeah. things here?" With new officers, they don't always think to do that. Uh, that's something a lot of senior officers would do because we're used to doing it. New officers don't usually think that way. Um, it's probably basically just going to come down to me writing a policy that says, hey, from now on, when you respond to this some type of nuisance violation, yeah. you will check the records to see if there's been any previous ones and then address them accordingly. Yeah. So pretty much everything they respond to, they should do that, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that the senior well, officers usually pretty good at it. me long enough to know there's, there's several nuisance Yes. In, at times. So. They seem to come all at once. <laughs> Thank you. All right, uh, regular business. Uh, bills to pay, balance on hand. I didn't see anything. I just moved to uh, pay our bills and approve the balances on hand. I'll second. There are a motion. 
motion and a second to uh, approve the, uh, the balances, pay the bills. Uh, do I have a second? Uh, I have a second. Okay. All in favor? All right. Uh, number two is an update on the CAD. We will get to some, a little bit on that. Uh, um, most everything's been ordered. We're just waiting for it to get in. All the equipment to put the computers in the cars. Uh, there is a computer at the sheriff's office right now that's getting all the, the new computers in, over there, getting everything installed right now. Uh, basically, we're just waiting for everything to, to come in and get installed. Keep, keep us abreast of the, uh, uh, anything that you possibly would need in advance and uh, necessary training. Yeah. Uh, I had, had a meeting last week with the sheriff's office, like I mentioned, I almost forgot. Uh, with the different departments in the county, and we discussed doing a refresher training. One of the issues we found was that as the system's going live, there's a lot of the same questions being asked by officers because what was taught in the training isn't exactly how the system works because of we were using a skeleton system that didn't have anything in it. Now that it fully works and we're starting to understand how it works, they decided it's a good idea that everybody needs to go back through some kind of refresher and be taught the right way. Okay. Number three, ordinance uh, 839 and references to legal counsel. Uh, this, this is bill number uh, 839, uh, uh, ordinance on uh, uh, obtaining counsel with uh, uh, Cummins, McClory, Davis, and Associates. For a lawsuit. Uh, uh, long you read this. Yes. Motion. Bill number 839, an ordinance providing for authorization to enter into an agreement with Cummings, McCory, Davis, Echo, and Associates, PC, for legal representation. Whereas Travis Gamble is duly elected mayor on April 4, 2017. And whereas the Board of Alderman feel it is sound business practice to have an ordinance granting authority to Mayor Travis Gamble to enter into this agreement on behalf of the City of Granby. Whereas the board deems it advisable and in the best interest of the citizens of the city of Granby to retain Brian T. Goldstein and the law firm of Cummings, McCory, Davis, Echo, and Associates, PC of Legal Counsel for Representation in the matter of 19NW CD00232 Martin F. Lindstadt versus the city of Granby et al. And That's me. now therefore be ordained by the Board of Alderman on the city of the city of Granby, Missouri as follows. That the mayor for the city of Granby shall be authorized to enter into an agreement with the aforementioned law firm for representation of the city of Granby, Granby elected officials, and Granby city employees. Said terms for representation are $200 per hour with no retainer required. That this ordinance shall be required to be codified in the Granby Municipal Code, and this ordinance shall be in full force and effect from and after its passage by the Board of Aldermen and approval by the mayor. <coughs> Move to accept Bill 839 on the first reading and suspend the rules and place Bill 839 on the second and final reading by title and number only. Second. So moved. Being moved. All in favor? Bill number 839, an ordinance providing for authorization to enter into an agreement with Cummings, McCoy, Davis, Ackle, and Associates, PC, for legal representation. Move to accept. Second. Roll all vote. Vote. Do you move to second? But I mean, don't you uh, give a verbal vote? Um, you'll sign your, your vote. Okay. On the all in favor. Okay. You both yay on it. Okay. I second it. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Sign it now. Get it now. This is right. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be signed tonight. Well, well, well. To be unlawful, I'm a taxpayer. Why should my tax money be paid to defend excuse me, excuse your Martin, misdoing? Martin. Hmm? Martin. Martin. Yeah. I didn't call on you to speak. Well, are you? No. Okay, so in short, are you going to endorse 815? I don't speak. Or what? I'll be arrested?
Good Lord, these, these, you know, good Lord, I think I'm going to go ahead and get about $200,000 out of these Lord, people. Stop. Why? It Sounds to me like my rights are being violated. Right. You need to leave. Why? You need to leave. You've been asked to be quiet. You're refusing to be quiet. You need to leave. Get your okay, stuff but it's supposed to be a mayor and city council, ain't it? I do believe. Well, okay. Are you are you are you are you taking are you taking criminal? You're, you're taking criminal. Yeah. Okay, you're taking. You for you four are taking criminal liability for this misconduct. Then. All right. Not a problem. Eight one five. Eight one five. Another. Another. That should be good for another ten years for all these criminals. Why do, why do they why do they yap about what the Russians and Chinese are doing? Why well, hell they're cooking her. Okay, now it looks like Travis is gonna get some more nonsense in. <laughs> oh. 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 